isn't it amazing that he hurt nobody? Nobody complained about him. No. Nobody complained. So the police or somebody in that institution yeah. decided it was a crime, even though no one was hurt. I thought I always believed you needed some form of victim somewhere. Well, again, this is down to the College of Policing because the College of Policing's hate crime guidance states very clearly that um, anybody, anybody can perceive hatred. Anybody. That worries yes. me greatly. So it doesn't have to be the victim. Mm. You, it doesn't doesn't need to be the victim. It can be the police officer. Now there was a report this 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 last week. I don't know whether it was um was it in the national press or did I just get it privately? They're saying the vast majority of of the hate element is reported by the police, mm. not by you or by me. It's report. It, it is a perception by the police. To me, that is that's that's a bit of a nonsense and. More importantly, I think this is a long, long way from what um, Bill McPherson, who wrote the, 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 the inquiry into the death of Stephen Lawrence, mm. this is a million miles from what, what he imagined. When, when McPherson said, criticising the Met Police and said, you need to believe your victims. When a community says, we are being harassed, we are, life is being made miserable, uh, you are not taking it seriously. You need to believe them. Mm. Now, that was a valid remark yes. by McPherson. What McPherson didn't mean by you need to believe a specific community when they give a voice to their complaints and their concerns. What he didn't mean was you should believe anybody, Everybody. even yourselves, <laughs> over anything whatsoever. That's as far removed from what McPherson meant as it's possible to be. And by the police, the police have watered down the McPherson report to the point that it is beyond useless. Mm. And we know it's beyond useless because racist crime has gone up. The, the reporting non-crime hate incidents has gone up. What actual crimes have gone up? Okay, well, of course, because it's so much easier to be knocking on my door and policing my tweet mm. than it is to be going out there and policing the street. It's much easier it's to get so a collar that easier. way. And so when you set as your target an increase in non-crime hate incidents and an increase in reporting of crimes, not the capturing of, mm. not the capturing of no, criminals, the by the way, the reporting of crimes, when you prioritise that, it allows you to believe that you've done your job and You're give yourself quota. a massive pat on the back yeah. where actually on the ground nothing's changed or if it has changed what's happened is you've taken your eye off the ball and it's got worse when we that's, see, when that's we see the, the activists on twitter okay when they, when they were celebrating what happened to you or what happens to anybody else I, I often wonder what kind of utopia they live in maybe they all live in really affluent places that are very very low crime the people reporting me you know the ones that celebrate the fact that you got done by a yeah. copper for all this and i'm thinking how are you how would you feel if your house had been burgled and no one was going to come out because we're not coming out for that yeah we'd send pc gull but he's busy yeah. he's busy tackling exactly. harry miller who who asked the question and uh, who won the 1976 men of decathlon <laughs> well there's a really which is class by the way is a hate crime oh jeez well, non-crime hate but yeah. there, there is a very uh insidious part of this that a lot of these guys who, who celebrate this sort of stuff don't realize is that if they're hitting quotas that way yeah we can fund them far less and then at some point like all of this shit it will come back and bite you right in the ass and you're just going to blame everyone else and it will because if our police can hit their quotas by sitting down and phoning you up to go bit of a rude tweet that mate yeah <sighs> that can go that's one in the win column there we go why 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 spend all the money sending them out why why do that we're it's hitting our quotas we're happy okay so uh, a year ago round about this month it certainly was after our high court judgment um, came in where Humberside were police were likened to the Stasi, the Checker and the Gestapo by a high court judge. PC Gull, the very same PC Gull who came to visit me, was out visiting a bakery, I think in Scunthorpe or Hull, uh, delivering, a set, delivering a, I think it was either a day or a half day session on hate crime to the bakers of, of Humberside. <laughs> Why would they do that? Why? But, 
I, I, I'm fairly au fait with the crime in our area. And there's not been an awful lot of muggings involving a fucking baguette yeah. or anything of the sort. Okay. So why, why would you send a police officer to spend a day or half a day or whatever it was to the bakers of Scunthorpe? Why? Now, there's only one reason why. It's not because he thinks that these bakers pose a risk of, of, of you know, throwing baps at people and... <laughs> Or what have you? A drive by yeah. bapping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Battery by <laughs> bapping, or what have you? He's doing it in order to make them aware of when they're suffering a hate incident, so that they can report it, so that they can get the numbers up. Okay. You, you, oh, you didn't realise that the way that person looked at you is was it, because, I was say, is was that, because of the colour of your skin. Is that really an epidemic amongst bakers? That they well, I, think, I think it must be. <laughs> well, I can't think of a single reason no. why why a, a, a serving police officer would boast on Twitter that he just spent the day teaching the bakers of Humberside about hate crime. Why would anybody do that? Why? It's nonsense. And it's, it's, with, will you allow me to be philosophical for one second? Yes. Okay. Play, Plato's cave, the allegory of the cave. Okay. So you look in the cave and you mistake the shadows on the cave wall for the reality. It's a it's an age old age old problem, and this is precisely what the police are doing. They're looking into Plato's cave, and they think that the shadows playing on the wall is the reality. They think that by going and educating the bakers of Humberside to recognise when hate is being done to them, even though they were quite happy beforehand, <laughs> yeah, suddenly they're now they realise, oh my God, <laughs> they're, they're, they're hating on me. When they, <laughs> gave that, when they gave that bread bun back, it wasn't that there was something wrong with the bread bun. It was because they, they were expressing hate because, you know, I'm ethnic, because I have a protect, mm. protected characteristic, because I'm trans, because I'm gay. I didn't realise this. I thought it was all about the bun, but actually it's not. Thank you, PC Gull. I now realise that you, you complain because you hate me. Yeah. So I'd better get on. And therefore, we've got another hate incident, which then allows the police to go, oh my God, we've got to throw in more resources to this. Because they're, they're, they're throwing resources at a problem that they generate. I, I would love to know. And I won't do the, the, the freedom of information request. I'd love to know if, if hate incidents amongst the bakers of Humberside goes up over the next 12 to 18 months. I would love to know that. You know, if we could find, if such figures were freely available, like up to and until 2020, <laughs> what were the hate incidents towards amongst, bakers? Amongst bakers, yeah. There's been an increase of 190%. How, how could that have happened? Yeah, how could that have happened? How could that have happened? Well, it happened because you're telling, you're telling people that they're being hated on because of who they are um, and they haven't realised it.